worship God as Brother Daniel Shortridge comes and sings. You know, we've uh, got a little problem having the same name. His name is a second, and they are sending some of my mail to his house. The only problem I've got, let it be my bills. <laughs> Amen. But it's happening. Uh, they got us in the computer, and they've looked beyond the second, and they think two people are one. So you pray about that. I'm confused. Which one's the daddy? Which one's the youngest looking? Worship God as he comes to sing. You name me that. (laughs) Thank you. It seems this uh, whole service theme this morning is about thanking Jesus for what he's done for the blood and then what he's done for me, thanking him for what he's done for me. Uh, Does anybody have a testimony this morning you want to give out? You just bust in at the seams to tell somebody. Come on, I know somebody's got some good news out there for somebody. Does anybody have one? Stand up. Let me see you. Sister Broom back here. Amen. Sister Broom's got one. Some of you didn't hear that. She said she wanted to thank God. She lost her husband a year ago um, in death. And she said that she's been going through a trial. But last Sunday, the Lord spoke to her and said, it's over. And she felt the relief relief and peace from that. That's something to praise God for. Amen. Let's give him a hand. But this, I was thinking about this song this morning. And sometimes our faith wavers. I know all of us go through that. But... um, I was thinking about this example that just come to me. You know, at Christmas time, and this used to be really big years ago when we didn't have all the credit cards and the credit lines and things like that, but people would go to the department store, Belk or Kmart or uh, wherever they had back then. Uh, how many remember Woolco on Cox Road? We used to go there, and they had what's called layaway. And, so, and they still have it, but it's very rare. You don't hear about it a lot. Um, but people would go lay away things that they're going to get for Christmas, toys for their kids or clothes for their spouse or whatever. And they would go lay away those things knowing full well that all they had to do was make the payment for that, and that was theirs. It was already, it was already purchased and bought. It was on layaway. It was theirs. They didn't have it in possession yet, but it was theirs. Well, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that our miracle is ours. We might not see it manifest in the flesh yet, but the payment has already been made. Are you glad for that? So all you got to do is is just thank him for it, and that's what I'm going to sing this morning, this song called Thank You. Just a little while longer I want to pray can't get you off my mind so I came to say thank you Lord just for loving me many times I do forget every need that you have met oh thank you Lord just for loving me even though when I I am down and out you're holding me your love is so amazing oh and it's changed me here I am with all I have I raise my hands to worship you I want to say thank you oh Everything just for who you are. You cover me and touch my heart. I want to say thank you. I could 
should have died in my sin, but you saved me. I didn't have any hope at all. You gave me peace divine and strength to carry on. I should have been the one to pay, but instead you took my place. Amazing grace is more than just a song. Even though I don't deserve the love you showed to me, you look beyond my faults and you showed me mercy. Here I am with all I have. I raise my hands, I worship you. I want to say thank you. Oh, thank you. Thing for who you are You covered me and touched my heart I want to say thank you Oh, I could have died in my sin But you saved me I didn't have any hope at all You gave me peace divine And strength to carry on mm -hmm. I should have been to pay, but instead you took my place. Amazing grace is more than just a song. Even though I don't deserve the love you showed to me, you look beyond all my faults and you show me such love and mercy. Oh, here I am. With all I have, I raise my hands to worship you. I want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for everything, for who you are. Covered me and you touched my heart. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. Son, oh, let me thank you for the rain. Here I am with all I have. I raise my hands and I worship you. I want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I thank you. You covered me and you touched my heart. I want to say thank you. Oh, here I am with all I have. I raise my hands to worship you. I want to say thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you for everything, for who you are. You covered me and touched my heart. I want to say thank you. Sing one more time. Think about his blessings. Here I am with all I have. I raise my hands to worship you. I want to say thank you. Oh, thank you for everything, for who you are. You covered me and touched my heart, I want to say thank you, oh, thank you, I want to say thank you, dear Lord, I thank you, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. Are we thankful? The longer I live, the more I realize I need God. Things can happen to you that you don't understand why it happens and why it works the way it does, but it does 
But you can't quit walking. You can't quit talking. You can't stop. There's nowhere to stop. The only stopping place is through the pearly gates when it's all said and done. Amen. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 125, verse 1. Everybody stand, please. I appreciate you. This is battle. This is war. Till we get through to victory. Can't ever give up. Can't give in. Can't give out. If you fall, make sure you fall on your knees and always admit when you've missed God. Don't never take up for the flesh. Always lean to the spirit. Because it's the spirit that makes a difference. In the beginning, God's spirit moved upon this world. And his spirit makes a difference. Amen. Psalm 125, verse 1, let us pray. Lord, I thank you this morning for the opportunity to stand here and preach this gospel. I'm not worthy. I feel like Gideon in our Sunday school lesson. We're not worthy, but you make us worthy through the blood that we saw this illustration, how we're covered. The devil can't get to us because of the blood. That doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect because it won't, but we'll keep on praising you. And we'll keep on living for you until you come. Save the lost, heal the sick, touch those watching the internet. Bless us all together in this altar service. My God, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. In Psalm 125 and verse one, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Let me read that one more time. Psalm 125 and verse one, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. I want to minister this morning just a few moments on the subject, trusting faith, trusting faith. And you can be seated, if you will, at this time. The word trust in this verse is very powerful in the Hebrew It simply means to be confident or to be sure. I'm not sure of my feelings because sometimes my feelings let me down and I'm disappointed. If you're living in your own ability, in your own power, you're gonna be let down, but you'll never be let down if you're walking in the Spirit because the Spirit is perfect, doesn't make mistakes, so we need to be sure that we walk in the Spirit. If we do, we'll have confidence and we'll have that surety. It means to be bold in the Lord. Everything centers around the Lord. It's not us. We're out of the equation. It's the Lord that matters. It's all because of him. The psalmist is simply saying that those who are confident and sure And those who are bold in exercising this confidence will be like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed but abideth forever. If you want to think about it and if you want to just reminisce on this thought, it's talking about Jerusalem. Everything the enemy's done through the generations of time, the the devil's never quit. And let me tell you, he'll never quit. It's not in him to quit. He don't throw in the towel. He doesn't give up. He's attacked Israel all the way from Ishmael all the way down through the generations of time. But the Bible said that Mount Zion connected with Israel, connected with God's people, David, will never be removed. It abideth forever. And that's the kind of God I serve. He gives me eternal blessings. He gives me an eternal touch. It's not temporal. It doesn't come and fade away, but it's here today. It'll be here tomorrow. If there's any failure, we can't blame somebody else. We can't blame our faults on somebody else. We've got to take responsibility and say, God, it's me that stands in the need of prayer. If you're living where you ought to live, you're gonna know when you falter. You're gonna know when you come up short. The Holy Ghost isn't given unto you just to tickle you and make you feel good. The Holy Ghost is to keep you in the race. And the devil's wise as a serpent. And he is a a power to be reckoned with. But our God is more powerful. God is saying here, the people who trust in him will be established. You're not wishy-washy. You're not one thing one day and another thing the next day. You are dependable. You have the right mentality. You have the right attitude. 
It all goes in just how you reach God, how you touch God, and how God touches you. I don't know about you, but I am in dire need of a touch of God. I've got to have him. I've got problems and difficulties, not only with myself, I have a whole church to look after. And I want to be the shepherd that God would have me to be. But I can't do that in my own or in my own ability. It comes from God. Your family cannot function without God. In the beginning, God made it all. In between the beginning and the end, God is everything. And if we misuse him and don't let him have the rightful place and we don't surrender ourselves in the way the scripture said, we're gonna be left out. But I don't wanna be left out. You won't be shaken. You got someone to stand on and depend on. Those who fail to trust God will be driven about by the onslaught of Satan. The Bible said in Psalm 1 and 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which a wind driveth away. I want to be solid. Jesus is solid. The devil couldn't handle Jesus. He tried to kill him from the time he was just a baby. And all through life, while Jesus was upon this earth, the devil was after him. He went to Nazareth and taught in the synagogues and he made them so mad till they took him to the brow of the hill and they wanted to push him off. But he escaped. They would have killed him premature, but God had a plan. And may I tell you, God cannot overthrow God's plan. God can work. He can do everything that, uh, that he wants to do for us, but we must understand regardless of what the devil does, God is not going to be overthrown. His word's going to stand. So to trust God is to establish a state of stability. Those who trust God will be stable. Don't have to worry about them going to church. Don't have to worry about them paying their tithes. Don't have to worry about them praying. They're not going to be a hindrance. They're going to be a blessing, but you can hinder. I can hinder. We're fighting this thing, and we've got to always be under God's tutorship, under his direction. Until it's all said and done, you're going to fight another battle. I don't care. You won a great victory, but another one's coming, another onslaught. Satan just takes a hammer and he keeps hitting and hitting and hitting. But one day God's going to take the hammer out of his hand and he's not going to be beaten anymore. He's not going to have anything else to say. He's going to be cast into the lake of fire according to Revelation 20 and 10 and he'll be tormented day and night forever and forever. Those who are steadfast are unmovable. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, I have my times, you have your times. But we're to be steadfast, unmovable. Satan will do something, then he'll worry over it. You got to get over your failures and keep on going for God. Keep pressing on. That a word abounding there when it says always abounding in the work of the Lord in the Greek means to excel. And here's a great meaning, to remain. Jesus gives us the ability to remain. There's many people that are gonna be in hell, used to shout the praises of God, used to run the aisles, used to have the old time victory, knew what it was to serve God in the beauty of holiness and walk with God, but they didn't make it. Why? They did not remain. Remain in these scriptures. Remain in prayer. Remain in your attitude toward Christ and your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Don't let the devil have a place. Always be examining your heart whether you be in the faith. He said in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourselves. Where you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know you're not your own selves. How that Christ is in you except to be reprobate. The only bragging I have to do is in Christ. Leave him out and I'm a mess. 
leave him out and I'm gone I'm out of here but thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ I'm going to make it because he made it I'm going to live because he lives I'm going to stand because he stood I'm going to see because he saw everything is because of him it's Jesus that makes a difference in your stability to trust goes beyond faith trusting faith is what I'm talking about Faith may come at times, and then your faith may subside. subside. It may have a negative attitude towards you. It may not be what it ought to be, but to trust is to keep your faith in continuing activity. It's one thing to believe God for something, but it's another thing to trust. Trusting faith is never letting go. Oh, but I'm not going to pray anymore. I've been there. You've been there. Don't tell me you haven't. You've been there. You prayed so much until it didn't happen, and you finally just come to the conclusion it's not going to happen. I've been there. But you know what to do? I say, God, I've done all I can do. I've prayed all I can pray. I'm prayed out. you got to do something. And I've seen him come through. I've seen him come through. God always comes through for us. If we'll only hold and trust in him, is to continue in that activity. Trust is keeping your faith active. Just because he doesn't answer today doesn't mean he won't answer tomorrow. Just because you feel like he's left you out, he hasn't left you out. Because he promised you he'll go with you to the end, you gotta have trusting faith that holds on to that promise, a faith that will not let it go. I may not see it, but I'm gonna trust God anyhow. I'm gonna believe what he said anyhow. I don't care what the devil brings against me. I'm trusting God. I'm going through to the end. I'm gonna see the other side. I'm going to walk through the gates of pearl. I'm going to scamper down the streets of gold. I'm not giving up until I see it. I'll believe for one thing that will happen, but i got to believe for something else. That is trusting faith. God wants us to have trusting faith. We just trust God. I trust people some. I do, some I don't. Some people I've got confidence in, I can trust them with some things, but I can't trust everybody. You can't trust your own self sometimes. You may do something say, now why did I do it? I have, and we, we do those things. And I'm not talking about sin, and I'm just talking about elapses now and then, but you gotta trust God to just get another hold. Satan will use your failure to push you down and make you feel unworthy, make you feel defeat. But you're striving to get get in. You're trusting to get in. You're holding to get in. And don't tell me you're not living there. I don't care. You are. Every one of you are fighting. You're struggling and you're seeing things and you're feeling things that's troubling you. You've got to have trusting faith. Faith to the end. Abraham had trusting faith. God told him to leave Ur the Chaldeans and go into the promised land he had never even seen before. He didn't even know what it looked like. He didn't know what he was going to face. Oh, my God, every day of my life, and this is a mentality that I have, I always understand this may be the worst day of my life. You don't know what's going to happen. So don't take your day for granted. When I get out of the bed of the morning, I start saying, oh God, thank you for this night. Thank you for watching over my members. Thank you for giving us a good night's rest. And now, Lord, I don't know what this day holds, but order my steps and help me to walk the straight and narrow. Help me to keep the victory. Help me to have that trusting faith in you today. He didn't know what he was going to get into, but he did what God told him to do. He had ups and downs and in and outs. Everything wasn't perfect with Abraham, but God gave him a promise. He said, you go to that land. You don't know what it's like. You haven't seen it. When he went to the land, he left his father's house, his kindred, his relatives. He went to the land, went to Sochem in Canaan land. And the first thing he did, he built an altar. 
And then he went to a place on the, the east of mountain on the east of Bethel, having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And he built an altar. And the Bible said he called on the name of the Lord. It's not enough to have altars in here just to see them. It's not enough to say you believe in altars. It's, it means something to use that altar. Get before God. The scripture said he built an altar. Why? He didn't know the future. Oh, God, I don't know the future. You don't know the future. But we know the one who knows the future. And we trust with trusting faith. I'm always looking to the end. I'm looking for the completion. My God, I feel and know that I'm going through because I'm not giving up. I'm not going to turn in the, throw in the towel. I'm not going to give in to the things that Satan brings to try to divide and hurt and cause problems. I'm going to do my best to live by the word and do what it said because that's the only way you can have trust in faith. God's got to be able to trust you too. It's not just me having trust in faith. God's got to be able to trust you. He wants you to be a specimen of his glory. He wants you to be a light that shines in a dark place. He wants you to be real. Abraham trusted God in Psalm 37, 3. Trust in the Lord and do good and so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. He took Lot with him. He took Sarah, his wife, with him. Lot didn't get that land. He pitched his tents towards Sodom. He didn't have trust in faith. But Uncle Abe walked out one night and God said, look at the dust. That's the way your seed's gonna be, maybe in the day. In the night, he said, look at the stars. That's the way your seed's gonna be. He said, you're gonna have a son. We're gonna call him Isaac. Abraham tried to get ahead of God. He went into Hagar, uh, the maid servant of, of uh, uh, Sarah, and, and he had a baby by her, Ishmael. When God had given him a promise, he tried to help God out because Sarah didn't have any way of having a baby. Uh, she was uh, barren, but God said, it's gonna be Sarah, and it's gonna be through your own pals, and you're gonna call him Isaac. And Isaac was born, and Ishmael was 13 years old about. When Isaac was born, God had told Abram, I want a covenant between me and you, and I want you to circumcise all your male children that are born in your house and the stranger that's bought with your money. I want an identity mark upon you, and I want to tell you God's people have an identity mark. They have a covenant. The males were identified by circumcision, and every one of them had to do it, and God said, this is a covenant. And he that breaks a covenant will be cut off. Do you think it's not the same today as it was in Abraham's day? God said your name is no longer gonna be called Abram. I'm gonna give you a new name. I'm gonna name you Abraham and you're gonna have a seed and kings are gonna come out of you. He left with nothing. Ended up with everything because he had trusting faith. Sarah found Ishmael mocking Isaac when they weaned him and they're having a party for him, mocking him. And Sarah said, that bondwoman and her son's gotta go. Ishmael cannot be part of us. He wasn't full blood, he was a half breed. God's not a half breed, he does everything in fullness. He's not a mixture. The promise was unto Abraham and he called him Isaac before he was born. So this woman, Hagar, had to be run out. Isaac became the promise. Then later on, he was tested. He said, take your only son, Isaac, and go to the top of the mountain and offer him for a sacrifice. He had to believe God all the time. You're not gonna drift into heaven. You think you're just gonna sing some happy song and everything's gonna be just wonderful. You're a fool. There's an enemy out there. There's a war that's on. There's a power that's come against us. We've gotta have this faith, this trusting faith that'll carry us through every battle, help us through every pitfall, lift us up every time we're down, help us to fix everything that's fixable, help us to walk upright with God and stay together and do the will of God and we'll be ready when we leave here Abraham purchased that faith 
And the last thing God really did, one of the most last things, he said, take your son Isaac. You've come this far, but you're still going to live by faith. You take him to the land of Moriah and you kill him. You offer him for a sacrifice. He got two young men together and a donkey put wood on the donkey, took Isaac, his son, and went to the mountain. And after three days, he saw it afar off. He ended up putting a, a Isaac on the altar. He's going to kill him. But God said he's going to be the seed. He said it's not going to come through any kind of other means, uh, through Eliezer, the steward. Yes, there's a steward in the house. And that was all he had of a promise. But he said, your wife's going to have a son. Sarah's going to be the mother of kings. And his name's going to be Isaac. And God says, kill him. He puts him down, going to kill him. But he knew that God had to do something because who God, who cannot lie, if he says we'll live right and we'll do right and we'll be right, we're going to come to the end of the journey and he's going to see us and we're going to be ready. He didn't have to kill Isaac. There was a ram that took the place of Isaac. The Bible tells us about trusting faith in many characters that I could go through. Not just faith. Not just temporal for the time being. But an everlasting faith as a battle comes, your faith is active. Everything that comes keeps you going. You've thought many times and you needn't tell me you haven't. I know you have because you're human. I've, I've come to the end. I don't know what I'm going to do. It looks like it's curtains for me. I'm not going to make it, but oh no. But then that faith throws into gear and you get another look at heaven. You get another look at the Son of God at the right hand of the Father. You open up that blessed old Bible and you begin to read the Word of God and do what God said. And new life comes because life is in you. And when you're down, you're up. You're having trusting faith. Daniel had that trusting faith when he wouldn't eat the king's meat and drink his wine. He came through and those four boys were proven to be more wise than all of the, the people of, of, of the Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom and they were elevated. They threw Daniel in the lion's den, but he had trusting faith. He came all through that time him and his comrades, and they were victorious. The lions could not do anything with him because he didn't lose his faith when he spent the night with him. His faith was still there. He believed in spite of the lions. He saw the end of confidence. God brought him out in Psalm 37 and 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Trusting faith. David had trusting faith. Nobody knew anything about David. They didn't know much about him except he's just a shepherd boy. That's all he was. Our lesson this morning we had about Gideon and the way I see it, I don't think Gideon was a mighty man of valor when that angel called him a mighty man of valor. I believe God was telling Gideon through that angel, I'm gonna make you a mighty man of valor. You weren't now. You're just out here messing with the wheat and hiding it from the Midianites just taking your crops away. But you are a mighty man of valor. He said, me? And I preached it just a few services ago. Me? Yes, you. Because I've chosen you. God makes a difference. He makes a difference in your personality. He makes a difference in your image. He makes a difference in your speech, in your walk, everything you are. God makes a difference in your life. So David had that trusting faith. He knew what it was to pull the lion mouth apart and deliver that lamb. He knew what it was to get rid of the bear. He knew what it was to bring down Goliath when the soldiers were running like scared rabbits around away from him and away from Goliath when he's crying, I defy the armies of Israel. David steps up and says, who does he think he is that he'd defy the armies of God? He don't have any right to do that. He had trusting faith. He failed miserably. He committed adultery and he killed a soldier, the, the husband of the woman Bathsheba that he committed adultery with. But he had to really dig deep then. He had killed lions, he'd killed bears, he'd killed Goliath, but now he's brought a shame 
on his entire character. His whole kingdom is affected. Everything that he's done that's been good looks like it's history. It's all gone. But he had trusting faith. He could have given up and said, God, I'm worthy to die because under the law, if you committed the adultery, you were stoned to death. He did supposed to be stoned, but God said, no, I'm not going to stone you because in Acts, the Bible said he was a man after God's own heart. He had so much trusting faith in God until God couldn't kill him. He couldn't take him out. He gave him another chance and he is the greatest man maybe in the Bible outside of the few, outside of Jesus, of all the characters of the Bible. He had trusting faith. What a great power to bring Goliath down. What a great power to kill lions and bears. What a great power when he went down and got the Ark of the Covenant. He's bringing it back. Saul wouldn't have anything to do with it. He didn't give it its rightful place. And David went down there to the house of Abinadab and he took that Ark and he brought it back to Israel and he danced before the Lord with all of his might because he had trusting faith. It never give out. There's some blessings that trust will bring. Trust will prove or bring safety to you. Proverbs 29 and 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. <laughs> we gotta make it. I mean, I've got to make it. We can't give up. We can't give in. We must have trusting, active, delivering faith. It's safety that you have. All the times God's people have been put in bad position, looked like it was over for them. God intervened. Israel's at the Red Sea, looks like you're gonna drown, but God drowned Pharaoh's army instead of drowning Israel. So what do we do? We get to the place where we produce this faith that brings safety. Trust will bring mercy to your life. In Psalm 32 and 10, many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall co compass him about mercy to him that trusteth in the Lord. He's gonna have mercy. And believe me, every one of you sitting here and me and every other human lives on mercy. We live on mercy. Who are we? We're dust. God breathed in man, he was dirt, and he gave him life. It takes that same life to sustain us and to keep us with this trusting faith that'll take us to the other side. Listen, there's a lot of people didn't think they'd ever give in, but they did. I want to trust God. There were 10 lepers that had come into a certain village, and they came unto Jesus. They were lepers, they stood afar off, they could only come so close, they had a law under them so many paces, they had to stay away from society, they couldn't mix and mingle with anybody, they had their own place to live, and here Jesus is coming to town, and they've heard about him, and they know they're hopeless, they know there's nobody can help them, but they've heard of Jesus, he's casting out devils, he's raising the dead, he's healing the sick, and they had trusting faith, and they looked up and they stood and they cried from afar off, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us and they he said go show yourselves to the priest on their way they were healed but only one of them returned to give God praise and he cried with a loud voice and praised God and he came and fell at the feet of Jesus and Jesus said where's the other nine at I sent 10 to go and only this stranger has come to recognize what I've done. Too many times we don't praise God and we don't give him glory when he does do something for us and then we would complain when it don't happen. Keep your eyes on the beautiful things of God and look beyond the trivial things of this world and keep a vision on heaven. Our redemption is sure. Our redemption is near. And we need to keep looking up. If I listen to the devil, I never preach another message. There's been times I didn't want to preach. Been times in my life, and I'm not talking about going out and sinning. I'm talking about things in my own personal it, it, it being that I had to go through. Times I've wept and cried like a baby and said, God, why did it happen? Why am I facing this? What am, what's going on here? But trusting faith says you can't quit. 
I called you to preach. You got to stay in this thing. I didn't want to preach as a young man. I, I didn't, I was like a, some, some of these other young preachers. I didn't feel like I could get the job done. I didn't think I'd ever get revivals. I thought, my God, what am I going to do? He sent me to North Carolina and I got booked up and I've been preaching ever since. But I've had a lot of disappointments. I don't get up here and talk about things, but I've always realized I've got to have trusting faith. I can't listen to my feelings. I can't look at people, listen to them, because sometimes they'll make you worse. You try to put your head on somebody's shoulder and they'll rebuke you. Well, you're committing some kind of sin. You're doing something wrong. I don't believe that just because things go wrong in your life, you're sinning. I believe there's a devil trying to turn your world upside down and your soul is in conflict with that devil and God wants you and the devil wants you and the devil's bidding with everything he's got to get you. But guess who's going to win? The almighty powerful God, the God of the universe, the God of glory. He's going to win. He's the winner. We're going to make it. Trust will bring peace. Isaiah 26 and 3, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because what? He trusteth in thee. It may be a little rocky now, but it's going to be okay tomorrow. How many have ever seen it happen? Oh, something comes hard like a flood and you just fall apart. You think this is it, it's over. But then just a few hours later, a few days later, everything changes. It's not like it was. It's different because God moves. Hearing some of the testimonies, senior citizens last night had a wonderful time, ate some good fish and come back to Fellowship Hall and had some good fishy fellowship. <laughs> Playing those games of children. Had somebody tell me already since it got here, they really enjoyed that, these senior citizens. You know it's funny how when we become senior citizens, we want to be like children again. We want to play games and have fun like they do. But in our age, in all that we go through, in all that we face, he said he'll keep us in perfect peace. Oh, yes, we'll feel at times it's falling apart and the the, the thread's coming loose. Had my coats fixed. I got short arms. I'm going to close in about five minutes, maybe 10, maybe 30. I'm about finished. I had a... I get my sleeves shortened and the lady that does my sleeves on my suit, she, she retired. She'd been doing them for years and she done a good job and, and I, this lady was recommended and I took a coat down there for her to fix it. She fixed the sleeve and I had it on the other day and there was a needle sticking out. What she did, she took the stick, the, the pin, a stick pin, is that what it is? And she sewed it inside the coat. I couldn't get it out. I looked down, I saw it. What in the world is that sticking in there? And it's like sitting down on a pencil one time. <laughs> Sit down on a pencil. Boy, I thought I shot to the moon. Woo, that was the worst thing just about. But I took her over. She took the thread apart and sewed it up. It's just as good as new. She knew what she was doing. I could have pulled it out. I could have said, man, I don't like this in here. I'm pulling this thing out of here. It had a head on it. If I'd have pulled it out, I'd have put a hole in my clothes. It's simple. I could have got somebody else to do it, but she fixed it, so I took it back to her. I had to go down there anyway for some things, and she fixed it real good. She sewed it back up. Sometimes all we need is just to get to the king and say there's something wrong here. Fix it. It's just as good now as it was before, and the pen's gone. I want to tell you, when God gets through with you, you're not going to be a mess. You're not going to be defeated. You're not going to be a nobody. You're somebody. God's put you in his kingdom. He's took responsibility for you, and my God, he's going to see you through to glory. You're going to make it because you've got trusting faith. Trust will bring goodness. Psalm 31, 19, oh, how great is thy goodness which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Before the sons of men, when it's hard to trust God, when criticisms are, when people are saying things that hurts, when things are coming your way, you can still trust God before the sons of men. Your faith is greater than their opposition. 
You may work on a job where there's blasphemy and filth and cursing and everything's going on. People running around, men and women with each other, everything going on. But God said that we can trust in him before the sons of men. We can make it because we have trusting faith that never fails. Not just faith, but trusting faith. Those who trust God, please come to the instruments. Won't be desolate. The word desolate means to punish or perish. Psalm 34 and 22. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his saints and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Proverbs 3 and 5 said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Commit thy way in the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. The only way for us to travel is to do it by trusting God with everything we have. Psalm 62 and 8 said, Trust in him at all times, ye people. Things go wrong on the job, take it to God. When your companion's not treating you right, take it to God. When things go against you, take it to God. Love each other, pray for one another, respect one another. We're the body, we love each other, we've got each other's back, we're gonna make it, we're gonna have love, we're not gonna be critical, we're gonna talk to God, he's gonna help us, we're gonna leave here, the rapture's on us, and some will be left, they don't want what I'm preaching, they won't submit, they're stubborn, they're rebellious, and rebellion is a sin of witchcraft, they won't make it, but by the grace of God, I'm gonna see the city! Pour out your heart before God. He is our refuge. Pour it out before God. Are you having trusting faith? Somebody may do you wrong and you don't understand why. Maybe they don't realize what's happened. Maybe things are going on and it's not understandable, but take it to God. I don't want... I don't want any division between our fellowship. If you're hurt at me, I don't mind saying I'm sorry. Because I can get out of hand too, just like you do. But I'm going to fix it, brother. Ain't nobody going to go around saying, well, he's mean to me and he's treating me dirty. and and he's No, no. no. If if I'm wrong, I'm going to fix it before the sun goes down. I don't want nobody hurt at me. I'm going to serve God. We've got to have a kind spirit. We've got to be pure, full of love. We can't be hateful and gracious and contentious and have God. The world's like that. They fight and fuss and go on and find fault with each other and criticize and looking for something to say to somebody. We don't need that. I'm talking to all of us. We need to love one another with a pure heart fervently, the scripture says. Love working no ill to his neighbor. The only reason I correct you is not to rebuke you or embarrass you or hurt you. The only reason I correct you is to keep you right with God and keep you prepared for heaven. If I'm just jumping on you just to rebuke you because I don't like it, like something you've done, that's wrong. We all got to be corrected. Every one of you have done wrong. So we don't have any right to throw any stones. Am I preaching good doctrine? Well, people are telling me I am. <laughs> Watching on the internet. And, but I'm not preaching to get the accolades of man. I'm preaching to get the truth of God in our hearts where we won't trip up because we haven't made it. It'd be awful to get down to the end and all of a sudden something comes up and trips us and we don't get in the city. I've come too far to look back. I'm not looking back. I'm looking up. I'm rejoicing. I'm going to preach to all of us, even to my own self because I want to make it to heaven. Would you stand, please, all over the building? Brother Adam's going to preach tonight. He's a good man. He loves God. He's doing a good work. We're workers together. All of the committees, all the officers of this church, you are expected to live by this book. If you hold office in this church, you're expected to be in Sunday school. You're expected to pay your tithes. 
You expect to be worthy to sing in the choir. Am I getting hard? I'm, I'm laying it on you. You're an example. People are watching us. It's not how much work you do, it's how you do it. I can preach all day long, but how am I preaching? Am I preaching just to prove a point and beat on you and make a point for myself to build myself up? No, I'm preaching to build you up. I want you to make it. Don't let nothing get between you and God. You tell the devil, get out of your way, kick him in the teeth, and keep on trusting God. Have that trusting faith that'll carry you through to the victory. This is a hard day we're living in. It's horrible. This is a tough time. There's a move, and I keep saying, and I want to, I don't want to get into that all the time. The time of testing is at hand. The world is coming to a close. My coming is near. It will get harder, but I am sufficient. I have told you my grace is sufficient. I've told you I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You will shine in this hour because this hour is dark and I will choose my people particularly and they shall glorify my name and my name will be exalted in the most troublesome days. My name will come out. There's no power will bring me down. They'll blaspheme my name. But when it's all said and done, I'll stand with healing in my wings and I'll gather you into my bosom and I'll take you away, away and away to be with me, saith the Lord. Raise up your hands and praise him right now. I want you to feel these altars. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I want you to come. If you're lost, if you've got a problem, if you've got a difficulty, if you've got things you've got to settle, I want you to fix it in this altar this morning. I want you to carry this thing to God and let God bless your heart. Let God touch you. Let the Holy Ghost move on you right now with the love of God in your heart like you've never seen before. Let the love of God be with you. I'm learning Come on. to live. Take this message and use it for a stepping stone, not a stumbling stone. It's how you receive the message will determine your altitude. Your attitude will determine that. Take it in the name of Christ and say, Lord, help me. Make me strong. Give me victory. Give me strength. Heal her. Deliver her by the power of the Holy Ghost. Touch your God. Touch these. Oh, God, bless my brother. Bless him, God. Bless him, Lord. Bless my brother, God. These two young men are precious, God. They're so precious. I remember when I was your age, God, you called me to preach, and you started preaching through me when I was 16 years old. First revival. Just a boy. I've floundered around a lot since then, God, but I've always kept trusting you. You've seen a lot, but you've kept trusting God. Because you've got to make it. You can't let nothing stop you. Can't let nothing stop you, brother. The Lord is with you. He won't leave you. Don't you fear. You lean on Jesus. He'll bless your family. He'll touch you. He's going to help you. I've been praying for you. Don't you fear. He's got a shield around you. He knows them that are his and those that name the name of Christ. Let them depart from iniquity. Bless her God. Had you on my mind. Touch her father. Touch her father. Yes, God. I'm learning your husband to God touch my brother. God, he's a good man. He loves you. Touch him right now. Lift him up and heal him. God, I love these folks. I love my brother. I want my tanana I want the hand of God to override him and bless him. Jesus' name. I want the hand of God to override him and bless him. Turn it to Jesus, brother. Don't let nothing deter you from Christ. Hold into his hand. Keep walking with God. Touch him, Father. 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 Thank you from my brother, God. Thank you from my brother. 
Praise Him, church. Praise Him, church. Praise Him, church. To Praise Him, church. If you've got an all to get somebody, you need to go to them. You can't have bitterness and envy and strife and hatred in your heart. You can't. Never. God loves you. Help her, Jesus. Help her, Jesus. Touch Him, God. Touch Him, Jesus. Touch him, God. Touch him, God. Touch your Jesus. Touch him, God. Touch my brother, God. Touch my brother. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You've got a fight. God's helped you. You've had it hard. Your life ain't been pleasant, but you still got the victory. <laughs> you still love him. The devil can't take that away. You shall not be removed. I don't care what the devil brings against you. You shall not be removed. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall not be removed. <laughs> You've been through it hard. You've had it tough, but look at you. You're still singing. You're still shouting. Oh, she's had it tough. God's blessed her. She, she had to lose some weight, and she's losing a lot, and she's losing more. She couldn't even get out. The only church she had was with the internet. Couldn't drive a car. God's blessed her. I don't say that for embarrassment. I say that for glory, what God's done for her. You better not leave God out of your life and think you're going to work out your own plans. It won't work. Your plans are destructive. The only hope for you is Jesus. That's all. Touch her God right now. Raise your hand, church. The Rebuke the unclean the devils that's come against her mind. Loose her. The light. Give her the victory. She loved her. You've been blessed all of your life. You've been just and you've been faithful. You've had trust in faith. And you're not going to go down now. You're going up. Praise God. Keep on trusting. At the cross where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. Good to see you, Brother Anderson. Good to see you back. How you doing? God bless you. At the cross, I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart was rolled away. Oh, yes. It was there by faith. 